Hi, I'm going to show you guys how to restructure an SPSS data set from what's called a wide form into a long form. So first let me show you what I mean by uh, a wide form. The wide form is typically what you'll see in um, most data sets and what that will be set up is where you have each patient or subject's information in a single row. So this is patient one, patient two, etc, etc. Now the way this will be set up, especially if you have repeated measures, as we do in this data set, is that you will have, say, their weight at the first time point, their weight at the second time point, etc., set up in different columns. But what we want to do is create a long form, and what that will do is set it up so that each patient will actually have multiple rows, and each row will be a separate measure on the repeated value. So let me show you how to do that. So first we're going to go up to data and restructure and then this uh, SPSS provides us with a really handy little wizard and I'll just walk you through it real quick. Um, what we're going to do is restructure selected variables into cases and that means basically do what I just said and take each one of the repeated measures and have them in a separate row but indexed by each one of our patients or subjects. Um, if I'm going to, and so I'm going to click that. Uh, again here, uh, how many variable groups do we want to restructure? In this case, I'm only going to restructure one repeated value. Now, if I have multiple repeated values, say I have weight and I have height, I have blood pressure, etc., I may want to use more than one, but for this example, I'm going to only use one, so I'll click continue again. Now here's where we actually start telling SPSS how we want to set this up. Now the case group identification, this is basically my subject ID. Um, and so I'm just going to leave this as ID. Um, I can use a selected variable um, as I you know, have here. Which variable do I want to use? Well, I want to use patient ID. Um, how are my variables? It says variables to be transposed. This is going to be my repeated measure and so I'm right here going to pick up excess weight loss. Now what I need to do is I need to go in and pull all of my excess weight loss measures over into this dialog box. So here's my one month, here's my three month, etc. And so you'll just go down and you'll grab each one of those that you're going to include in your analysis. And so here I've got five measures, one month through twelve months then the fixed variables here are going to be variables that aren't repeated uh, measures. Um, so I have the hospital for each patient. Um, I want to pick up, uh, say, surgeon, sex, and age. I'm just going to hold down my shift key and pull all these over. And these are variables that I can then uh, do some grouping analyses on within my repeated measure. So then I click continue. How many index variables do we want to create? Now an index variable is going to be a name for my repeated measure. Um, I'm only creating one and you'll see now it's going to ask me um, what, what do you want to call that and how do you want it to be structured. My repeated measure here, I'm going to call this my time measure. Okay, and I'll just call it time. What, uh, when were they measured? Now I can use, um, I can structure the, the cases uh, the, the, each one of my time measures in one of two different ways. I can give it a, a sequential index value. So my, say, one month is going to be one, my three month is going to be two, etc. So I have them in order. And that, this will work. The downside of this is it doesn't tell you exactly uh, if I use variable names. You can see here I, I have exactly in my variable name um, when the measure was done. The problem with this, unless your variables are named uh, in a sequential way, that is to say um, my first measure is going to be alphabetically fall before my second measure, etc, etc. What's going to happen when you do some of the analyses, it will flip your variables around because in some analyses in SPSS it will um, use the last variable in the, you know, alphanumerically has the reference and you don't want that. So sometimes it might be easier just to select sequential numbers. Then we're going to click continue. Then I, it, SPSS asks me, what do you want to do with first the uh, variables that you didn't select? And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and drop them. I'm going to create a smaller, uh, more streamlined data set for this analysis. 
um, but I could uh, select to keep all the fixed variables in. Um, I'm not going to. Uh, what do you want to do with the missing? I'm going to uh, go ahead and create the case, so I, I'll allow missing in my new data set, and I'll just plan for that in the analysis. So then, finally click through, it'll say, what do you want to do? I want to go ahead and restructure the data. And so I'll click this, then I'll, SPSS will give me a little note about sets I was using. If I wasn't using any sets, I did any subsetting for my uh, in my previous data set. Um, I don't have to even worry about this. I click OK. And now you can see um, I have many fewer variables in my variable view. If I jump over to data view, you can see here is my patient one. Okay, and my patient one has um, here's their measure at time one, time two, time three, time four, time five, time six. So um, patient number one has measures at each time point. Patient number two, you'll see, um, now has five rows as well, but they only have a measure at my first time point. Patient three has measures at two, patient four, so you get the idea. So now this structure, which is called the long form, because if I scroll down, you can see it's now quite long. I think I have over 7,000 rows, but this allows me to analyze the data in ways that I couldn't when my data was in the uh, wide form structure. So that's how you restructure the database from a wide form to a long form in SPSS.